file server resource manager is an underutilized tool that can keep viruses off your server and keep your users from accidentally filling up the hard drives in your server as well. I'm in server manager in Windows Server 2022 and I'm going to go to add roles and features and add FSRM and then I'm going to apply a couple of different policies to go along with it. So I'll click next until I get into the server roles and I'm going to expand into file and storage services. After that, I'll expand the file and iSCSI services. And then I'm going to go down to where it says file server resource manager. And when I select that, it's going to add some features to go along with it. So that's fine. And now I'm going to choose next. And then I'll scroll past the additional features because I don't need them at this time and click install. Once the installation is done, there'll be a new console that I can use to set up certain policies to keep viruses off and keep our hard drives from filling up. Installation is complete. I'll click close. Now I'm going to go up to tools and take a look for that file server resource manager. And there it is. Now I have multiple different options. I have quota management, file screening management, and other options. The two most important here are going to be the quota and the file screen. Not that the other ones aren't also important, but this is where we're going to start. So I'm going to choose the quota management. Now I'll click on quota templates to start with, and you can see there's already some templates that have been added in by Microsoft. Here we see that we can limit the amount of space that someone can save to a shared folder to 10 gigabytes, or we can do 100 megabytes, or any one of these different options. Some of these will actually stop a user from adding any more data, while others will just monitor it and send warnings. And you can tell the difference by looking at the quota type here at the top. The quota type will tell you if it's a hard quota, which will stop the user from saving any data, or a soft quota, which will just send them a warning. If none of these quotas actually work for you, you can just create a new one. So I'll click on Create Quota Template. I'll call this one block at 20 gigabytes. And I'm going to choose the limit at 20 and the megabytes I'll change to gigabytes. So here I can choose the hard quota or I can go into soft quota and add certain thresholds as well. I'm just going to choose the hard quota because I definitely don't want them to save any more data than that on my shared folders. Now I'll click OK. Um, if I go over to quotas, you can see there's no quotas set up yet. So first I have to create a shared folder because that's where the quotas are applied. I'll choose my E drive and I'll just right click and choose to create a new folder. And I'll just call this shared. And now I'm going to right click on it and share it. I'll click properties, sharing. I like to choose the advanced sharing because it gives us additional options among other things. And under permissions, I like to take out everyone and just put in domain users because it's safer. So that way guests don't have access to things, makes you less likely to get cryptoed. And I'm just going to choose full control just for this test and demo. And under the security, you can just go ahead and leave it the way it is because I'm already an administrator of this folder. So there's my e shared folder. So now I'm going to create a new quota. So create quota. Now I can browse to that particular location and click OK. And now I can choose which quota template I'd like to use. And if I hit the drop down, I can choose block it 20 gigabytes. And you can see some of the information here that it's going to apply toward the shared folder. And the source template is going to block it 20 gigabytes. And there'll be a notification, which is basically a notification to the user, as well as a log file. So I'll click Create. And there is my block at 20 gigabytes. Now, if that user goes ahead and tries to save more than the 20 gigabytes, then they will be blocked. It'll say that you can't save any more data. And of course, that soft quota will just basically warn the user, but it will allow them to continue saving data if you'd like. The next area I'd like to look at is file screen management. And this is great for blocking out viruses from ever getting on to your server. Once again, I'll start at the file screen templates. And here you can see different types of files that you can block. 
The one that I find the most useful is the executable file. So if I double click on executable files, you can see the template that's in here. It highlights the executable files that you see here. I'm going to click edit. And here are all the files it's going to block by default. So this will keep any users from saving this to your file servers. And if you're using remote desktop services, it will keep users from logging into the remote desktop server and saving data locally that has any of these extensions, which are very much likely to cause an infection on your computer. So I'm also going to add an additional type of file to include, just to test one, one, two, three, just as an example to show you how it's done. And you can also exclude files as well. I'm going to click OK here. And if I'd like, I can also add in any of the other templates into this as well. So let's say I don't want them to save any image files. Let's see what's in there. I click Edit. There's all the image files. So the image files can tend to take up a lot of space, and some of them can contain malware as well. You can also go in and set up an email message that will send a message. It sends the email to the user who attempted to save the unauthorized file, and you can go ahead and let the administrator know as well. If you go to the event log, you can also set up event log warnings, commands to automatically run when this type of event is tripped, as well as creating a report. I'm going to click OK to that. Let's hit save. Yes. I don't have an SMTP server at this time to save it to, but that's okay. I can just cancel out of that. So if I go to File Screens, then you can see my shared folder once again where it's being applied. So I'm going to go ahead and try to save a file and just see if it gets properly blocked. So I'm going to go to this folder with the shared file. I'm going to right-click and choose to create a new text file. And I want to be able to see the file name extensions. So you can see it's .txt. I'm going to change that to .exe. Now that's fine here because I don't have the template applied to the desktop. I have it applied to the shared folder. So let's see if it gets blocked when I try to copy it in. And it says you need permission to perform this action. The access is denied. So it doesn't tell you that FSRM blocked it, but that's exactly what's going on. So for instance, if I went and tried to just copy it directly into the E drive, I would have no problem. FSRM has other features as well that you can take a look at, such as storage reports management, tells you how much storage is being used and by whom, as well as classification management and file management tasks. So I encourage you to check out the other features that are also in FSRM, although the two most important that I've seen as a systems administrator are the file screen management as well as quota management.